patchwork comforters are a great way of using scraps of fabric to make items of beauty and warmth. Sometimes though, you might want to make a comforter and you don't have that stash of fabric. And so today I'm going to offer another way to use larger blocks of fabric to make a comforter. MCC is having its 100th anniversary coming up and they have made this goal to collect 6,500 comforters from Canada and United States to share with people in need around the world. The size of the comforter that they request is 60 inches by 80 inches and I will show you a pattern that I have adapted to meet that need. For this comforter, Rather than individual pieces, we will be using four different colors of strips and I will show you next how we do that. Here I have already cut my fabric. You cut the fabric selvage to selvage. 11 inch pieces. It should, it should be at least 42 inches. And in addition to that, you have one piece of each fabric color that is six by 11 inches. With a rotary cutter and a ruler, you will want to cut the selvage off of one side of your piece. Now you will see that I have the four colors. I've arranged them in an order that I think looks nice together. And we will call this A, B, C, and D. And I will be sewing the four colors together. We will be sewing them from selvage to selvage. Okay, this is how it should look after the four colors are sewed together. We next will be sewing A and D together, which will be creating a tube. But before we do that, I always like to iron them while I have it flat. I want to iron all the seams down from A to B. I have matched up the edges of A and D and I'm sewing them together now. Okay, now you see I have sewed this seam together here of A and D, and so I have a tube. The other seams are already pressed, but I need to press yet the A to D seam, and I want to make sure I'm pressing it in the same direction the others were pressed. So all the t seams are pressed going the same direction. Now I am folding my tube in half here, matching the cut edges on the side. And I usually, I, I don't fold it on the seam. I fold it uh, in, on flat areas so it lays nicely. But I usually just double check with my ruler to make sure that I have it folded evenly in half before I fold it again. Again, not totally in a quarter. I'm going to just fold it um, like that. And I'm going to bring this over to my edge of my cutting board. I really like the Shape Cut Plus for this next step. I'm lining this up with zero. This edge is actually pretty straight, but I'm just going to straighten it off. And then I will go in every, I'm doing is cut every six inches. I will go in at the six. The 12 and the 18. I put little marker numbers around those numbers to keep me from making mistakes. And la la, look at that. I have these, what we call, I'm going to call a pieced rings. And now I will move this over here 
to the edge. And since that is a fresh cut line, I am going to start with this at this six inches in so that I can get my remaining four cuts. So with 42 inch piece, I get seven pieces with three pieces of each color. That gives me 21 and I need 22. And so that is why I need to have these four extra pieces to make one more pieced ring. But you see, I have very little waste with this pattern. I'm going to take masking tape and I'm going to label A, B, C, D. These are the four pieces that were extra and I will need to sew those uh, later to make one more pieced ring. But for right now it will help us identify our colors because we are going to be cutting apart these rings. And for the first cut, I am cutting between piece A and D. On, I'm cutting the tube at the place of the seam, actually cutting off the seam allowance. And this will be my center piece for, we'll, we'll do, it, uh, this comfort is done in two halves. So this is the center piece of this half. Next, I will take two pieces and I am folding them in half on piece A, matching the seam matching the seam and cutting them apart like this. And now I am laying it beside the piece and I am going from A down to D. The seam will always be down, plus the design lets you know. So we will continue doing the same thing of cutting two pieces for each side. This time we are going be making our cut between A and B. Cutting in the middle of B. Now we will cut between B and C. I love watching the design appear visually. Our final cuts now will be cutting piece C. People wonder sometimes, why do you sew the ring together if you're going to be cutting apart? And the reason is that you are cutting it apart at different spots and it's just a very quick way to make the design rather than figuring out all individual cuts otherwise.
there you can see our design and we are next going to sew the pieces together. Just a suggestion, the first time you do it, to avoid confusion, I suggest you just label each piece. Let me pull this so I can reach a little better and put it up at the top. This is number one, number two, three, four, and so on. Now we're going to pin these together, taking one to two, folding them together where your seam will come. And I like to pin three pins on each section, one at the top, one at the bottom, and then I stretch them to get my middle, and one at the middle. I will line that up here, do three to four, the same thing, five to six, seven to eight, nine to ten. Nine, nine to 10 and piece 11 will wait till next time. We will now take this pile over to the sewing machine and sew the pieces together. Now I'm sewing pieces one and two together and I'm back stitching here and then I will go down. And I will back stitch at the end again. All my seams were going down and on the other seams, they were also going back down. And you see here we have the two pieces together. The fun is that our seams, we're not needing to match seams because the seams come at alternate places. Now I chained all my strips and uh, so I'm going to quick take these apart. Again, my clue for seams all going down, here's one to two three to four. Okay, we have one, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now I, now I will sew these seams together, these seams together, these seams together. After that I will come back and sew these last together. So I will almost, uh, I will next show you when it's finished. Okay, I finished my first piece and I brought it over here to the ironing board. Before we said all our seams had been ironed down, now this time all our seams will be ironed to the left. And uh, after this first half is finished, you will repeat the same process and make a second half. Also ironing those to the left. Here is my first half that is finished and I have my second half ready to be joined with it. This is the only time in this putting the comfort together that we are matching seams. And because the seams have been pressed left on this side and left on that, they will butt together and lock in. And I usually put a pin in that seam especially the ones where the color changes for the uh, pattern. And then we will take this to the sewing machine for the final stitching. Again, removing my pin, feeling them locked together. Here we have the finished comforter top. I sewed that center seam together and you see how the seams lock together and I ironed them again before putting it out like this. I did not talk at the beginning of this process of what your uh, yardage need is. If you're only making one comforter, you need a yard and a quarter of four different colors. If you want to make it in bulk, you can buy six and three quarter yard of 
four colors and that will be enough for seven comforters because out of one extra strip you can make one of pieced ring that you can give to each of the seven comforters and you can make them each look different by starting with a different color in the center you could choose to do your green as your color a or this is your color a and you get a different design part of the reason that i made this pattern is because at our church we have many Korean people who were refugees from Burma or Myanmar and fled to refugee camps in Thailand. While there, they received comforters and wondered who sent these. Now they are enjoying the pleasure of making and nodding comforters and say, now we are the ones making them. It has just energized our whole group to know firsthand people who received comforters. So whenever we finish a comforter, we pray for the person that will receive it, that they will experience this as a gift from somebody who cared about their situation. And we pray that God will be with them and that they will feel his love. So I encourage you, get some material, have some fun sewing, and may you find joy in giving.